Hi, I'm Ash from Droning On and welcome back. This is part two of our two-part review of the Walkera F210 3D. In part one, we unboxed and inspected all elements of this exciting new FPV ready-to-fly quadcopter and we promised to show you some flight test footage. So without further ado, here it is. When you're ready to fly the F210, there are a few steps that you need to take before you do actually launch. Um, the first one is on the transmitter, make sure that all of your sticks and settings are set to zero. If you're an advanced pilot, then ignore that. But for a beginner, we're gonna be setting everything to its base zero position, including the throttle. Next, props. Never just rely on the fact that your props were tight last time you flew it. Always ensure that you tighten up the props or at least check that they are tight. You can look at the little indication on the prop that will tell you which way around you need to be tightening it. Ensure that the antennas are folded up. These are your control antennas. This is your video antenna. Also ensure that that is upright if you're flying FPV. Getting the battery in can be a bit fiddly on this. I've found that if you leave the Velcro through the strap and then slide the battery in, then it's much easier like that. Now there is an, an anti-slip mat that you put underneath the battery. Um, we're not doing any serious flying today, so we're not gonna use that, but you should install that to avoid the battery slipping forwards and back. Once the battery's in, check the center of gravity. Again, we're not doing a major flight today, um, but generally you'll get the center of the chassis, hold it like that and ensure that the aircraft is properly balanced. Only then do you tighten the battery up like that. We're now ready for what's called the binding process. This is connecting the transmitter to the quadcopter. Now the manual states that you should turn the transmitter on first and then the F210. It doesn't tell you however about the time that you should leave between those two steps. I found that if you start the transmitter up first, and let the transmitter fully boot up, the F210 then fails to bind and emits a long beeping tone. So the method that I've found that works nicely, turn the transmitter on and immediately connect the power on the F210. And that's our binding complete. Now if the binding fails, the beeping that you heard will just continue on the F210. The other thing to check is that all the trims on your throttle control are all at neutral. If they are not at neutral or they're slightly positive, that also seems to trigger this beeping on the F210. With the F210 now bound uh, to the transmitter and powered up, it looks really good. The lights on the rear and also on the front make this look like uh, quite a cool <laughs> aircraft. Um, I have noticed that on mine, the um, indicator panel on the left only the right hand indicator seems to be working. The left hand does nothing. I have read on the internet a few other threads about people reporting this issue. Apparently the clusters in here are very fragile. Um, I'll raise that with Walkera to see, I'm assuming that will be replaceable under warranty. Alternatively, apparently the part is available via Banggood. Um, someone else has replaced it, it's a couple of screws. So I'll put a link to that in the video description. But generally, um, yeah, it looks really nice. Uh, I'm sure it's gonna look really good when it's flying as well in the air. The final step now is to lock and unlock the motors. This is a safety step which stops you from accidentally throttling up. So to unlock, you simply hold throttle left and the quadcopter emits a beep and the motors are now active, as you can see. To lock the motors, simply hold right and the motors are now locked and safe. So here goes. So first of all, we unlock it and then we give it throttle. Very, very smooth. And very, very responsive.
here's a good example of when the battery is running low. You can hear the F210 emitting a beep. Um, also the rear red LED is flashing. So that means we've got to basically land now because the battery is approaching uh, its lowest possible voltage. Also notice that when this mode triggers, the power available to the F210 it seems to be reduced automatically to it to save the battery. Right, let's take it back indoors. So this is the F210 3D. Um, it's a really, really nice, stable flyer. I mean, you can, don't know if you can hear the wind, it's seriously blowing here. And yet this thing is pretty stable in it. You can see it twitching around a little bit, but not so much. So let's have a go at the punch, see how, um, how rapid this is. Here we go. Wow. That is seriously, seriously impressive. Major power and it does not want to come down. Dropping the throttle right down. So um, the other thing I noticed is it doesn't seem to be too bothered about its own rotor effect. Um, it doesn't get into its own prop wash when you descend. It really doesn't seem at all bothered about it. Might be helped by the weight of this quad because it's not exactly light. I mean, considering what's on it, it's fairly light, but as far as racing quads go, right, this is a heavy one. Oh, that's great. As soon as you apply power again, it just stabilizes itself. Really impressive. Okay, let's try a bit of, bit of a speed run. Wow, that's fast. Now what I do notice is when I give it forward rotor, because at the moment we're in stabilized mode, it won't let me tilt or pitch any further forward than it allows me to from the factory. Um, now, because of that, when I give it full forward tilt and full power, it just wants to climb rather than just go forward. So maybe it needs a little bit of programming there. Of course, when you turn it into less stabilized mode, number one, I would imagine that issue would stop. Um, I mean, it just goes brilliantly. It flies so nicely, it really does. And that power when you give it full throttle is just great. Let's bring it back for a little bit of a hover. There it is. Um, you're on it's not bad, the yours quite slow, but again, this is all programmable. So if you want it to rotate faster, you can make it. You know, it's a great thing about this, plug it into your computer and you can change certain aspects of the way that it handles, which is great. But this is lovely. I mean, it's, it's so agile and responsive. I'll bring it right up to me just to show you. Now, you know, just again, this is not a beginner's quadcopter. It's very responsive. You know, it, it will literally go wherever I point it and tell it to go. You can see here it's, you know, it's very agile. And this is in stabilized mode. Um, it's not for beginners. It's definitely an intermediate to advanced pilot. Um, if you are a beginner, you buy this, you take it very, very, very slowly. You'll become a great pilot, but I can't recommend that at all. very bright and it's always very important to keep quadcopters away from the sun because as soon as you get blinded by that sun you lose orientation and then you're screwed. <laughs> so nice. 
really nice and it's just solid absolutely solid where i tell this thing to go it goes when i tell it to do something different it does it it's um really beautiful got a great sound as well as it turns into the wind. Right, we've got the battery warning beep again. Not sure how long we've been flying for, but we can um, check the video, see how long we've been recording for. But I think that's probably just, just over six minutes, possibly, something like that. So again, you can hear the battery beeping, indicating that it's um, a low battery. And also the rear lights, the right-hand LED flashes, the LED that's red to let you know that your battery's running low. So never fly for much longer after you get the beeping because you don't want to damage your batteries. So we'll land at this point. It's actually a shame to land. I'm having a great time, <laughs> but anyway. And finally, I briefly connected my Fat Shark FPV goggles to get some recorded footage from the on-screen display transmitted from the F210 3D. You can see that in the center is a virtual horizon. Bottom left we have voltage and on the right a timer which starts automatically. The lock and unlock status is also shown, as is the low battery warning which is very useful. It was very windy on this day and so not really ideal conditions for an FPV flight, but a flight is better than no flight. Overall, the F210 3D is a really, really good quadcopter. It's not for beginners, it's really for intermediate to um, advanced pilots. If you do buy it as a beginner, you'll certainly be an excellent pilot eventually, but you may have to replace quite a few broken parts. The RTF set comes with everything that you need to fly, battery, transmitter, and of course the quadcopter itself. So for £350, which is about $460, that's really good value for money. There are a few issues, however, it seems maybe this isn't common to all of them, but mine had a few loose elements that needed tightening up, um, and of course the faulty indicator on the back. But I'll raise that with Walk Hera, hopefully we'll get that solved under warranty. But overall, I'm really impressed, and I look forward to flying this more in future videos, including trying to fly upside down. That's it for this review. Please be sure to comment, like, subscribe and of course share and I'll see you in the next video. What makes them special I hear you ask? Well the SE model includes everything you need to go out of the box. We've got the headset itself which feels really good quality. I'm gonna put the GoPro up to the eye of the Fat Shark one of the lenses to show you what you can see. You can now see through the camera. So if I move this camera around, and what I'll actually do as well is start the DVR recording. There we go.